Good morning. My name is Brooke Krajancic and I'm a PhD student at Stanford, here to talk about our recent work on occlusion-capable augmented reality using a single spatial light modulator. I'm here on behalf of my co-authors, Natish Padmanaban and Gordon Wettstein from the Stanford Computational Imaging Lab. As many of you are aware, augmented reality is widely believed to become a next generation computing platform with applications including education, training, design, and medicine. But the true magic of AR is the potential to render digital content indistinguishable from the real world. But achieving this requires great displays that come as close as possible to matching normal perception. However, commercial optical see-through displays instead produce this, since they are currently unable to properly support occlusion. Occlusion describes a phenomenon where objects at some distance to the user partially or fully block the light from objects at farther distances. This cue provides the human visual system with important information about depth, and so failure to properly emulate occlusion, meaning that virtual content appears semi-transparent, not only detracts from perceived realism, but could be dangerous, inducing user error in, in tasks involving spatial judgment, since relative depth is harder to determine. Current generation displays use optical combiners that additively superimpose the digital content, as often displayed by Spatial Light Modulator, or SLM, on a direct view of the physical scene. An inability to block real light leads to digital content appearing semi-transparent and non-realistic. Many previous works, initially by Kiyokawa et al, and most recently by Hamasaki and Ito, has demonstrated occlusion capability using an additional SLM for pixel-by-pixel -pixel blocking of the physical scene. However, as seen by the ELMO 4 system developed by Kiyokawa et al, this comes with the cost of increasing the complexity of optical and electronic systems, and hence form factor, power requirements, and need for robust alignment and calibration. Instead, we propose factored occlusion, a new approach to obtaining pixel-precise mutual occlusion. Instead of taking the conventional approach of adding digital and real content, we propose a new type of display that merges real and virtual light paths in a multiplicative manner. This enables us to improve occlusion capability without adding an additional SLM. To do this, we utilize the pixel states of a digital micromirror device, or DMD. Most common, commonly found in projectors for their high light efficiency, the pixel grid of a DMD is an array of microelectronic mechanical mirrors. For explanation purposes, we'll represent this device as four pixels. When used as a, as a digital light projector, these micromirrors can be individually programmed to flip between an on state, where light from an RGB LED is directed towards a viewer, or an off state, where the light is directed towards a light dump and the user sees no light. In this way, a DMD can display color images by separating them into their red, green, and blue components. Duty cycle, or the ratio of time that a pixel stays on for, is used to modulate intensity within each component. For example, this pixel would have a higher duty cycle staying on for longer than this one, where not as much red is needed. Because the mirrors flip at kilohertz frequency, we can switch the LED to render all three color channels in the same way, which all sum to produce the final image under the integration time of the eye. We can also easily see how a DMD can be used to generate an occlusion mask on a real scene. Those pixels can just be indefinitely switched to the off state, blocking light from that scene. In this work, we try to do both at the same time. Can we effectively block light coming from the real tree and re render this virtual flower in its place? To do this, we replace the light dump in a standard DMD with the physical scene. In this way, we can see that getting the pixels around the flower are easy. We can just set those micromirrors to show the real world. But now let's try to render the flower. Starting with the red channel, we can see that we hit a problem. How do we modulate the intensity of the red? Since we no longer have the light dump, instead we have green coming from the tree in the background. So we would have to modulate between red and green, which is not ideal. So as is often the case, 
we can see here that we can't actually give you a free lunch. We're going to have to cop some colour degradation. But this is not always the case. For example, for example, we could probably do a great job with the blue channel, since we know the leaves, which should be no light, are in fact green. So if we flipped those pixels to the real scene, where it is green, we wouldn't see any colour degradation. We'd reconstruct the leaves. And perhaps we don't even need to switch the LED to green. We could use the green in the background. But then who says that we need red, then blue, then green? We could turn the LED to purple or even completely off to help generate some of the darker parts in the red channel. So really, we would like to know what would be the optimum series of LED colours and DMD flips to best reproduce the target composition. You might be getting the hint that if we know the real scene and what and where we want to render virtual content, this lends itself nicely to be formulated as an optimization problem, which is exactly what we did. We developed a factorization algorithm to compute the optimal series of DMD and LED states to construct a target scene composition O. We first derived an image formation model O hat, which mathematically describes the image that the user observes as a combination of the physical scene R, modulated by the DMD states D, and the temporally varying LED colors and intensities L. We formulate this as an objective function and derive a set of update rules, which we use to iteratively converge towards the target composition. I refer you to our paper for full derivations of this. So here we have a, sh a short snapshot showing how our optimization approach converges towards the optimal res result in 10 iterations. And here we show how that optimal DMD and LED states combine under the integration time of the eye to form the final observed image. To validate our simulations, we implement a benchtop prototype. So you can see the scene comes in through the focusing optics onto the DMD here. Uh, and on the other side, we have the LED, which goes through a diffuser before landing on the DMD. And we capture the time multiplex result with this digital camera. So here's a Lion King inspired scene composition, where down the bottom, you can see that the rhino and the shadows are the added digital content. And at the top, we have the simulated output of what our approach should be able to achieve. And here's what we captured, which you can see shows an improvement in inclusion capability and rendered color compared to that that would be produced by a conventional beam splitter configuration. In particular, the ability to block real light from the physical scene means that the realistic shadow effects can be rendered. However, as one might expect, our method is not without its faults. By its construction, we optimize a trade-off between the accuracy of the desired occlusion mask and color fidelity of a digital image. It can be seen that the leaves on the tree are still visible through the rhino rendering, with the system being unable to recreate the complex shading of the rhino while simultaneously subtracting out the background. But the nice thing about our setup is that we can really see the approach in action. So we can separate out each light path. So if I was to cover the LED and just let in light from the physical scene, we can just see the occlusion mask. Note that unlike previous occlusion techniques that use a second SLM, light is not actually fully blocked within the rhino shape. This is because some of the yellow in the scene is actually used to reconstruct the rhino image as we can visualize here. So this is the light being added by the LED. So this time I've covered up the physical scene. And you can see that the optimization approach has figured out that it needs to add light when the rhino was in front of the green tree. And moreover, add a color such that the tree doesn't actually need to fully occlude, be occluded. And instead the light can combine with the green in the background and produce the target color of the rhino. So adding back in the physical scene, we can see the final captured result I showed before. So here is another perhaps even better result where the color degradation in the virtual chair is fairly minimal. And it's obviously a significant improvement over the conventional beam splitter configuration. Now rendering an elephant also works well with only minor color degradations where the ear is in front of the tree, similar to the rhino case. Again, we can re realistically render shadows now that we enable occlusion. 
and finally, rendering Alice a tea party set again shows significant improvement over the conventional. When the background is bright, light blockage is particularly important to prevent the ghostly looking digital content that you can see in the beams for the image there. So we also demonstrate that we can mitigate these color degradation effects with a gaze contingent display mode. For example, say that we wanted to render the above red and blue birds. Using the global optimization approach previously described, both birds lack full color and detail due to the dynamic range limitations of the approach. But if we had eye tracking and knew that, that a user was looking closer to the blue bird, we could assign higher weights to those pixels in the factorization algorithm, which as demonstrated here, could locally improve correct digital and inclusion rendering of that blue bird. So we do notice that the rendering of the red bird worsens, but it's likely that this would not be noticeable in the periphery. Similarly, we could do the same thing for the red bird. And again, that blue bird loses detail, but again, hopefully not noticeable in the periphery. In summary, we present factored occlusion, a new approach to obtaining pixel precise mutual occlusion by merging real and virtual light paths on a single SLM. But of course, it's not without its limitations. The proposed system reduces hardware complexity at the cost of computational requirements. Hence, power consumption, for example, becomes a trade-off. However, computing resources on wearable devices quickly advance, and we propose that this algorithm could become part of a future application-specific integrated circuit. Unlike waveguard displays, the real scene is modulated by a pixel grid. However, the use of a DMD means that the see-through state does not suffer from the light loss of transmissive displays, such as LCDs, used by previous occlusion approaches. The use of the single display also means that calibration and registration is simpler and could lend itself to smaller form factors. We do not demonstrate this, however. With the benchtop implementation we construct being neither wearable nor real-time, we obtain runtimes of about 15 seconds with an unoptimized MATLAB implementation, although we expect this to drop dramatically with the GPU. Concentra concentrating on evaluating the display approach, we use rather bulky focusing optics that make up the majority of the large form factor. However, the approach places no limitations on the type of optical elements that could be used, and thus future work will investigate the multitude of paths towards miniaturization. Other future directions could investigate different loss functions for the factorization approach. Currently, we use a least squares loss function applied to linear intensities. While this works for many scenes, reformulating this objective to minimize the error in a more perceptually uniform space, such as CIE lab, could further improve the perceived quality of results. Other displays could also be used in a similar and perhaps more effective way. For example, polarization could be used to switch between virtual and real content rather than mirror direction of a DMD. Furthermore, next generation spatial light modulators are also in development. For example, switchable mirror technology pictured here could provide the functional equivalent of a transmissive DMD which would be advantageous for reducing form factor and optical complexity. But with this preliminary work, however, we demonstrate a fundamentally new approach to combining real and digital content in optical see-through augmented reality. Rather than using superposition, a configuration that does not lend itself towards the blockage of light needed to support occlusion, we show that real and virtual light paths can be merged multiplicatively with a single display. This enables a fundamentally new way of obtaining occlusion, and factored occlusion represents the first in a line of such approaches. For more details, please refer to our manuscript.